Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So here I am for my October currently inked, but before I get into that, I just wanna do a very quick overview of my September progress update. I do this to look over the pens that I've acquired, the pens that I've sold or given away, same with ink, so that I can keep track of my spending using over the course of the year. So in terms of pens, there were three pens purchased in the month of September. The first one was the Hogtown Pens Paris and Bloom and that is just a stunning stunning pen Ooh. and but that one was a commission from ages ago uh the next one was a leonardo ferrore aqua petra which was a very spontaneous purchase but wouldn't have been possible if i hadn't tried that model in the or at the san francisco pen show then we have the pelican m800 video coming soon and then two pens received. So this is different from the pens purchased versus the pens that I've received because sometimes I'll order a pen one month but it won't come until months later or the next month. So two pens that I did receive in the month of September were the Paris in Bloom as well as the Furore Aqua Petra. And then there were three pens that I sold or gave away. The first one I sold was the Pelican M605 in the black tortoiseshell. That one I thought that I would never ever get rid of, especially because of the sentiment behind when I bought it. But I, you know, after trying the M800, I realized I no longer need that in my collection. The next, the, it was a Zodiac, Zodiac Pen Co, the Virgo model in the primary manipulation. I actually gifted that to a friend of mine. And then lastly, I sold my tailored Pen Co in the Honey Melamel. And then for inks, I had one ink bottle gifted to me and that was from the Pelican Hub and that was the Pelican Edelstein Rose Quartz. I did not purchase any ink samples or bottles in the month of September, which was amazing. And then I was gifted 24 ink samples, which again was crazy. And then 14 ink samples I had used or given away. So my totals for the month of September, I have a total of 91, oh my gosh. 91, where am I keeping all of these? 91 ink samples, which means there was an increase of 10, which makes sense with the number that I was given and used. Ink bottles, 39, there was no change because when I acquired the rose quartz, I also gave away one uh, ink bottle. And then for my pens, I'm actually at 31 but there are three on the way. So when I look at my total count of pens, I look at how many I actually have in hand versus how many I purchased. So there's three on the way, which is that number 31 is down one month, one from last month. Crazy. Anyway, so that is my total for September. Let's move on to the currently ink. Just a quick note before I get in here, like look at how thick and how many pages are left in this notebook, but look at how thick this book is getting. I will do a proper flip through of this at the end of the year, but I'm just so happy with how this book is chunking up, which makes it actually really hard to write on this side. The first ink is going to be Diamine Jingleberry, and this is currently inked up in my newest Zodiac Pen Company. This is in the Arabian Nights Koi by Jonathan Brooks. And this is in the Aries model. There will be a video on this coming up. So what I'm gonna do actually with these is take a little drop onto just a tiny, tiny drop here. So that way we can get a little bit of an ink swatch using the back of the sample ink vial. And that way you can see what the ink looks like outside of the regular writing sample. And how gorgeous is that? So this pen has a Yovo steel nib, number six steel nib, and it's in extra fine. Oh, there's some ink on the side there. So this is the Zodiac Pen Company in the Aries model. And this is in the Arabian Nights Koi. And I had this done in a uh, matte finish and it has an extra fine nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Jingleberry, which is, I believe from the 2022 Inkvent calendar. So far, a very wet, 
and smooth combination. Like that's very pink and punchy, which is not normally something like when it comes to pinks or, well, this is more magenta, but like this just matches the pen beautifully. So that is the first pen and ink combination, Zodiac Pen Co with the Arabian, no, with the Diamine Jingleberry. So the next pen and ink combination that I have here is the Ferris Wheel Press and it's a Fashion District collection. It's the Spadina Rose and I am putting this into my Heinz Pen Co. And there is no name for this blank. It was a uh, diamond cast pen blank and there is no name for it, but it was, this pen was sold to me at the San Francisco Pen Show. And I'm gonna show you here what it looks like on the page. So I'm placing a little dot with the pipette and then swirling it around with my sample ink vial. Oh, pretty. I thought these two were actually gonna look very similar and I'm really glad that they don't. So this Heinz Pen Co. for one is very pretty, but you see this pink nib and it's an extra fine nib that has actually been um, tuned by Jim Heinz himself. So this is the Heinz Pen Co. And I have no idea what it's named. It's like the unnamed blank. And this has an extra fine nib. And the ink in here is Ferris Wheel Press or FW, FWP Spadina Rose. When I first saw this ink, I thought it was Spadina, but no, it is Spadina. It's actually, I believe it's a street in Toronto. So I really like this ink. One of the themes that you will see across my October currently inked is that a lot of these inks are from 30 inks, 30 days that I wanted to explore in a different pen and wanted to explore a little bit more. And I really liked this ink and couldn't wait to use it for another month. So that is my Heinz Pen Co with Spadina Rose. The next pen and ink combination is my Estabrook Esty in Petrified Forest with Diamine Ancient Copper. Again, this was used in my 30 inks, 30 days, and I really love the color, but I wanted to try this ink in a different pen, and I love my Estabrook Esty, so I thought this was the perfect time to try it. And I'm going to place a small dot here on the page once again. I like doing these circles with the sample ink vial because you can see different characteristics of the ink as well next to the writing sample and that one just splurted a little bit but oh how cool is that and then using my Estabrook SD they're not an exact match but I really wanted to use this ink in this pen so this is my Estabrook SD And this is in ooh, SD in the Petrified Forest. And this has, I believe, it's also an extra fine nib. Super smooth. And the ink is Diamine Ancient Copper. I really liked this ink when I was using it in 30 inks, 30 days. So I thought I need to take more time to explore it and try it in a different pen and plus it's fall so I need more fall inspired inks here but so far really really like it so that is my uh, Estabrook SD in Petrified Forest with Diamine Ancient Copper the next pen and ink combination is a new one. A video on this particular pen will be coming out next week. It is my new Pelican M800 in the black green, and I am inking it up with Ferris Wheel Press Peter Moss. And I'm gonna place a drop here on my page. And then I'm going to swirl it around with the sample ink vial. I love this way of sampling or swatching because it's 
you get such cute circles, but also it's very easy to clean. I'm not using a ton of those cotton buds, but also, you know, you, the cotton buds aren't soaking up a ton of that ink as well. But oh my gosh, how gorgeous is that pen? Beautiful. So this is the Pelican. Oh, so smooth. M800 in the black green. And this also has an extra fine nib, but this extra fine nib is definitely um, wider than, and much wetter than the other ones that I have on this page so far. And it has Ferris wheel press Peter Moss, which I think is a great match. But oh my gosh, so far, this pen and ink combination, this nib is bouncy, beautiful, and the it's very, very wet flowing pen and ink combination. So far, really, really enjoying that. I can't wait to write with that this month. So that is my Pelican M800 with Ferris wheel press. Ferris wheel press, Peter Moss, goodness. The next pen and ink combination are my Lamy 2000 with Birmingham Pen Co. Heron. Why did I choose this? I actually really loved this blue. And you know what? I really like writing with my Lamy 2000. So here I'm gonna place a drop on the page. This is such a pretty, pretty blue. And I wanted to try it in a different pen. So let's have a look at what this swatch is like. If you haven't seen my 30 inks, 30 days. Oh gosh, let me do that again. Perfect. It's so pretty and it kind of goes along with like the kind of dark turquoise, but also that blue gray that I'm really liking. And the combination so far with the Lamy 2000 is fantastic. So this is my Lamy 2000. Oh my gosh, again with the extra fine nib. I swear that is not, <laughs> that was not planned. So this is Birmingham Pen Co. Karen. Oh, so far I am loving, loving it because it's such a wet combination and that extra fine nib is so smooth and there's like a touch of an architect grind to it. So far loving it. So that is the Lamy 2000 with Birmingham Pen Co. Heron. The next pen and ink combination is one that I did use in September for 30 inks, 30 days, and I just haven't inked or uninked it. It is Van Diemen's Aurora Australis, a sample given to me by Shazia of Bleskit Canada, and it's paired with my Leonardo Aurora, no, Leonardo Ferrore Aqua Petra. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous pen. And I'm placing a dot of that ink onto my paper. And this is an ink that I didn't think that I would normally gravitate towards, but the base of this ink actually matches, I think, really well with this pen, but it's got that beautiful purple. And then when it dries, you see a really nice, but not overpowering green sheen. So this is in my Leonardo. Furore. Aqua Petra. And I bought this second hand off of Reddit, and this is a fine. A fine, yes, this is a fine nib, and this was actually tuned by Annabelle um, of Applebaum. And this has Van Diemen's Aurora Australis. You can already see it drying there, and you can see that green sheen so so interesting sheen is not normally a, a characteristic of an ink that i like but it is so interesting in this pen and this is the pen and ink combination that i'm actually using in my five-year journal this month and so far oh gorgeous 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 so that is my leonardo furore aqua petra with van diemen's aurora australis the next pen and ink pairing is Birmingham Pen Co. Fox Squirrel in my Just Turnings 
pen <laughs> with my custom from uh, Turnt Pen Co. It's my Swirly Joyful Kismet. And yes, I am using a brown. I know, I know, I never said. I'm, I'm not normally a big fan of brown, but I really like this one and wanted to give this one a chance. So I'm placing a drop here on my page and then I'm gonna swirl it around again with the ink sample vial. And I am actually a big fan of this brown. I've written with it actually for the last couple of days and I really like it with the pen and nib combination. So in my Just Turnings pen, and I have here a Yogo number no. six fine nib that's been ground into a cursive smooth italic by Jack Hernandez. Just Turnings swirly, joyful, kismet, which are basically my initials <laughs> backwards. So fine, cursive, smooth, italic. And then this is Birmingham Pen Co. Fox Squirrel. Now I know this pen and ink combination don't necessarily match, but that's okay. I just wanted to be able to use this in a different nib that would show off the shading properties. And I think so far I'm a big fan. And you guys know how I don't normally like the browns, but this one I am actually really liking so far. So that is the Just Turning Swirly Joyful Kismet with Birmingham Pen Co. Fox Swirl. And last but not least, I am pairing Dye My Mineral Gray with my Hogtown Pens Paris and Bloom. Who thought I would be using Dye Mine Earl Gray again? But I really wanted to give it more exploration, which is why I'm inking it up for the month of October, because as you see here in my little ink blot or ink splatter or ink circle, whatever it is that you want to call that, that it is a really pretty ink. And actually when I was using it for 30 inks, 30 days, I love the flow. I love the shading. It was just, I couldn't get enough of it. So I'm happy to be using this again for the month of October and this time in my Oh, where did it go? Oh, <laughs> in my Hogtown pens. The gray in this pen, normally I wouldn't go for a pen that has gray in it, but I really like this one. And this has, guess, just guess what nib size I have in this one. What did you all say? Extra fine? Yeah, I know. But this one is, is just such a smooth, extra fine. They are uh, all actually pretty smooth, extra fine. So this is Dye Mine, Earl Grey. And I am, again, excited to use this combination and to explore this ink a little bit more with a different pen. So really, this whole month was to look at the inks that I had used in 30 inks, 30 days, and just explore them a little bit more. So that is my Hogtown Pens Paris and Bloom with the Dye Mine Earl Grey. So there are all my pens and inks for the month of October, and I realize they're not really Halloween-y. Some of them are more fall than others, but I really do like to have a mix of different colors, and I don't necessarily go with one theme or another. I really want to go with a set of inks that give me the most flexibility throughout the month and for this particular month i really wanted to explore these seven inks just that much more after 30 inks 30 days all right but that is it for me thank you guys so much for watching can you guys predict which one is going to be my favorite at the end of this month i don't even know so if you think you know what is going to be my favorite let me know down in the comments below once again, thank you guys so much for watching. What are you guys inking up for the month of October? Let me know again once, in, once again down in the comments below. Thanks again so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.